Hey guys, welcome to Third Style Garage. My name is Doug. Uh, this episode is episode number four of the restoration of a 66 Volkswagen Beetle named Hendrick. Uh, we brought the car into the shop yesterday and this is day two of the stripping of the car. Got a lot of pieces off and uh, Dale and Ron are working on the doors. Uh, we've got the dash out, got the switches out. Um, and uh door mechanisms interior is getting fairly gutted my task today is to drop the engine out of the back so we are going to work on disconnecting it unhooking it um, and then we'll go through the process of unbolting it and dropping it out the bottom uh, if you like content like this like following along in the story of hendrix restoration uh, I'd love it if you click subscribe, and uh, if you have suggestions, questions, things we can help you with, or things you've learned along the way that you want to share with us or others, I'd love it if you post a comment below. I'll do my best to respond to them and follow along. Thanks. Have a great day. So in the engine compartment, um, you've got the gas line, uh, I'm sorry, that's a vacuum line, gas line fed off of the fuel pump. And then this is the feed line, which goes around the back. And uh, that is disconnected. Let me get in there. You can see where it attached. It goes through the firewall. Um, there's a hose back there. Focus, there we go. Um, so that is disconnected. We will need to disconnect uh, the accelerator cable. Uh, there is a wiring harness that goes to the, I think, oil pressure sensor, the coil, the generator on the other side. Uh, so disconnect that, pull it off to the side. There are uh, cool air tubes that go from the fan shroud down. Remove those so they're out of the way. Next, the engine front engine tins are going to come out to give us a little bit of space. Um, and then I'll double check things, but I think we'll be pretty close to ready to start unbolting it after that. Okay, so in the engine compartment here, I'm going to take off uh, this oh, okay. tube that goes to the air filter. Set that carefully aside. I took off about a dozen screws along the bottom of this front sheet metal tin. Uh, it should be kind of held in place by your engine seal. It's a pretty critical piece that goes around the engine compartment, keeps the hot air and the cool air separate. Uh, a little stuck here. There we go. Once the front engine tin is removed, you need to crawl underneath the car. Um, here's your heat exchanger. This is where your heater cable attaches to the control mechanism, uh, the butterfly valve on your heat. So you're gonna put a, let me see if I can zoom in on that. Put a flathead screwdriver on there. Loosen that up. And this cable should pull out. Uh, so we'll do that to both sides. And then uh, this will be free from the chassis. Okay, so the final removal step is to take the four bolts out that mount the engine block to the transmission bell housing. And uh, there, there's four 17 millimeter bolts. Took me a little while to find these because they're kind of tucked up underneath the engine. Uh, they're also covered in a layer of grease. Uh, so the first bolt is right there, which is gonna be uh, above this frame horn. And then the second bolt is kind of right there. You can, it's hard to see, but it's uh, buried in, kind of in a layer of grease right there. Then the top bolts, bear me with me a minute as I get up. The 
top bolts, you have to reach kind of with the engine cover open, you have to reach behind and there's a 17 millimeter bolt right there. And there's one on the other side as well. You'll have to reach in and turn those loose by hand. Um, loosen those and then uh, the engine will become loose. It will be hanging up on the transmission shaft input spline with a jack supporting it underneath. You can slide it off of that and lower it down onto the ground. All right, so we're gonna lower it a touch. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Now we try to... And then if you pull it off forward, it should end up... Like we're too. Uh, it feels free. Eh? Yeah, it feels free on the dad. Oh, What's yeah. catchy? Don't wiggle it. Look, there we go. You're, you're going down. Cool. Okay, stop a second. Let me feel it. Yeah, okay. you're very free. Yeah, there's still a little bit in this housing that's that it's gonna potentially catch, but it's close enough. I think your wiggling will get it out. Okay, going down a little bit. I'm watching this vacuum advance and the generator. Oh, Ron. All right, you are. Pull off everything the, in the back is clear. Okay, I'm worried about this seal right here. Oh, we're gonna get a new one of those. But okay, then I don't have to. Yeah, worry it's, about it's that. all. What? I hung up on it. You want me to get a screwdriver to pull it around? Can we? What if we swing it around like two inches this way? Is there a little bit more clearance right here? Go. Wonder what that means. Yeah. And off of it. Hold on, don't move. Okay. Listen. Yeah, that was on the. All right, that that was smooth. Like we're professionals. <laughs> this is an example of why film editing is such a good yes. thing to know how to do. <laughs> so, our biggest challenge was we had to get it off of the bottom two bolts. And then the shaft that comes, here, let me turn around and show you. This transmission shaft right here was getting hung up on, yeah, I think still, getting hung up on like different parts of the clutch. Nope, that's the fan shroud. It's way down though. Um, oh, it's below the it's below the transmission. Yep. Here, I'm gonna have to get underneath it. Uh, yeah. The shaft was it came out of here, and then was getting hung up on here and here as we went, which which caused us to kind of have to do a little bit of a. It came back, and we dropped it down a little bit which got us further below the apron. We could go a little farther and eventually we got it off the bolts. And then it was just kind of one of these type of things on the way down uh, with the jack kind of supporting it. Now that it's sitting on the jack, uh, obviously it won't pull out here. So we need to lift the car off of it. Ryan, would you do that please? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the engine is out on the ground. We took the jack scan up underneath it. You have a floor jack with a series of blocks that are I stole from the Mustang. And uh, just a jack underneath that. We'll crank that up. It should tilt on the middle two sets of jack stands. And hopefully raise this up high enough that we can clear the engine. You want to go ahead and jack, Ron? Okay. Dale, you want to guide it from the back? All right. I'm really good at getting stuff jacked up. <laughs> That's what mom always said. Starting to see air, sunlight above the, by sunlight I mean LED light. Your shoulder. All right, I think we're, that'll clear it. We can come out. Okay. Outside. We'll pull that out and we'll throw it on a dolly and we'll work on that later. Good work guys. Uh, we are removing the front beam on the 66 Beetle. Um, I'm not sure when we're going to finish the work on it, so uh, the, you might see the Beetle in various stages. This is day two of our disassembly. Um, Dale just reminded me to videotape this, which I forgot and I apologize. But we just dropped the beam out of the front. Um, overall, it came out fairly simple. Uh, there are four bolts 
Let me grab them a second. There are full bolts, bolts here of them. There are four bolts. Here are two of them. They're 17 millimeter. They go through the front of the beam into these welded in nuts on each side. So it's those four bolts that hold the beam in. What makes it challenging is all of your steering linkage uh, is attached to this and goes over top of um, the frame. So the front beam mounts here, those big torsion tubes run right across there and then the steering linkage go here. So as you unbolt it, it wants to drop down and hang on that steering linkage. We looked at this ball joint there and the boot was cracked. So we figured that's a good one to replace. So we cut that one, unbolted the steering damper, and then basically we're able to drop the beam out and, uh, and pull it out. We do need to disconnect the speedometer cable yet. You may ask why we removed it. Um, part of it is so that we have better access to the front sheet metal. Um, that's probably a different episode in this video and partly because we want to take this out, clean it, paint it, inspect all of the steering components. And then we're going to install, at least the plan right now is to install two, an adjusting kit um, in each parts of these beams so that we can raise and lower the front of the car and fine tune the ride. Um, so now I'm gonna unhook the speedometer cable, set it to the side for now. We'll jump back to this video later when we're working on it again. All right, here's the front of the car. The front beam is out, sitting on the ground there. We're gonna go into more detail about that later. Ron and Dale are working on taking the top off of the back. How's it going back here, guys? Um, you know, the top was, uh, it was put on not by a professional. And okay. so I'm not sure how much of this is the way it's supposed to be and how much is, is just the way it was done. Um, but what we've got, there were some trim pieces that are kind of unique to an older 60s and, and that we saved those chrome pieces, but they just nail in, carefully pried those off. And then there's Wait, a the lot. chrome trim nailed in? Yeah, so the chrome trim, here's a, a bit of it. and You can see it's got all these nails. Now, it's tricky to get out. I'm not quite sure how we're going to deal with that, but that goes up in here and that's part of an older Beetle convertible is to have okay. that chrome. What holds those nails in? Are they stuck to yeah, it? Yeah, they're in like some kind of track. Okay. I don't exactly know. So you just gently pried them out. Yeah, but okay. even then you still have waves in it. So yeah. I know that some people will use um, like more modern thin plastic um, yeah. coated trim that, that, that bends better and doesn't give. So I don't know what we'll do. We'll have to figure that out. Now, are you planning on... Uh this top going back on or not? You're putting a new top That's on. That's a great question. Um, I plan to have a professional put on the top. Okay. So we're not worried about anything. We're just gonna get the top off of the car. Okay. And uh, I've never done that before. So I'm just kind of peeling away the pieces to it. And you've got, you know, lots of nails into the vinyl and there's a padding and there was another uh, beading that was in there, all these different pieces. And then we've got these lag bolts um, and there are three of them on each side that go in. And that's what's really holding the metal contraption onto the car. So that's the rear, probably main hinge. Exactly. Right there. Okay. And so now the rest of it, we've taken all this molding off. There is a bunch of molding all in the top here. Rubber molding, like weather stripping moldings. Correct. That's what you're talking about. Yep. And those all have this metal strip inside that and As we're little doing. Yeah, little uh, screws. Countersunk sheet metal screws. Yeah. Okay. And so we have all of those off now. Okay. And uh, with these all out. Clarification, that's probably a metric machine thread with a tapered point, which is a little different than a lag screw. That's, but that's all right. I just don't want to steer go. people wrong. No, no. Yeah. You know the terms better. I'm not sure if we're going to need, there's a number of these um, screws here. And I'm not sure if we're going to need them out. Right now, we, we're not going to take the wood off we're just gonna take the entire assembly off and leave this wood i'll be needing to buy a new batch because of all the holes and stuff in it there are some signs of some rot in other spots so i don't know if oh, a little leaked. water damage here so and it could have been that the previous owner reused 
Sure. In a way, and although I see Chuck's convertibles, and that's where I plan to buy it. Um, Chuck's oh. convertible tops as uh, as the parts I need. So at this point, There's another one of those screws. All right. So you're gonna leave point, leave the glass on. in for now. We'll pass the glass on to a new top, or maybe a new top will come with one. So Ron and I plan to fold it up a bit and see if we can take it right off of the top. And in theory, it lifts off. Watch the window, it's a little bit hooked or coming unfolding. Oh, this, this, hold it. You need me to grab a knife? Yeah, there's, all right. Okay. So, and lift. Sure that I've got okay and clear of it. I think. Are we hooked up here? <laughs> Something else is hooked. All right. In all honesty, this is try number three. <laughs> there we, go. we go. Make sure all the all the strapping is clear. Look at that first there time. Way to go. Where are we going with it? Um, I'm just gonna set I'm it down. Go, all right, you can stop go put it in your own garage. And that is a wrap for day two. Ron, Dale, and I, uh, it is Saturday night. What time is it? Eight o'clock-ish. Um, we drove this car in at 1 p.m. yesterday. So a day and a half later, there is really no parts left to come off that we plan to have come off. The trunk release, the bumper brackets we're leaving on because we need them for measurement's sake. Front beam is out. Um, we're leaving the master cylinder in, we're leaving the hood on for now because we need that for measurement's sake. Um, interior is completely empty. The top is off. The rear quarter glass is out. All the window scrapers are out. Carpet is out. Dash is out. Complete white. There's not a single wire left in the car. Glass needs to come out yet. Um, fenders are off. We're going to leave the rear suspension in and the starter and the transmission for now. Engine is out sitting on the floor and uh, running boards are out as well. Um, it has been a day and a half of good work. Um, no huge gut-wrenching sad surprises. Um, you know, we're, we're not yeah, yet. We're not to the point where it's beyond possibility, uh, but we do know some of our suspicions were confirmed that we've got one floor pan that's in good shape, one that has a few holes underneath the battery, uh, patch that was replaced, tarboard that needs to come up yet. And then this area right back in here has a lot of ugly patches in it that we need to investigate further. The front clip is one of the main reasons that uh, we even started this project. Um, you can see how there's a nice curve on this edge. There's a lip that comes in and then all of a sudden it's cut out and a new lip starts that's on a completely different trajectory. And there's a seam here that goes up here. Uh, we've got a patch through here, down here. Um, I'm gonna flip around this side. We have a lot of similar things going on here. If you look at this piece got, sorry, off the camera. This piece got cut off, jumps up, doesn't line up at all with this piece. We've got a patch through here, um, some ugly welds there. So we need to do a bunch of work in the front, which is part of the, the reason we're trying to do it. The other side of this A pillar, um, we know we've got a lot of Bondo here. We've got some suspicious looking cracks in the Bondo there. Um, those funky welds on this side. We also notice at the very top here, we've got a stress crack um, near where that upper hinge is. So Monday, we've got Monday yet to work on this. We're excited to spend another day on it. Uh, time to start taking paint and Bondo off to see what's below. The tunnel has three access points cut in it, not by us, don't blame us. Um, those need to be fixed well. There is the bracket that holds the shift bushing 
should be attached to the top of the tunnel. Um, it's not. Don't know why when you take the shifter out, the bracket falls to the bottom. So we need to figure out that as well. Um, there's also um, some welds on the other side that I don't know what to think of those. So we're gonna, we're gonna grind them down and clean them up and inspect it and see, see what we find. Uh, everything can be repaired if you take your time and do it well. But, so, eight hours, 12 hours today, about six hours yesterday, so in 18 hours, three guys, you can strip a beetle down to nothing and store it away in about six tubs in about 100 plastic bags. Thanks for following along. Stay tuned as uh, the adventure continues. Have a great day.